Hello, BillWhittle.com members and non-members alike. I'm Steve Green, and this segment used to be for members only, but our members, out of the generosity of their hearts or the cruelness of their souls or something, decided that it would be incumbent upon them to force us to share this with everybody. And so you're welcome. Bastards. Or we apologize, whichever answer you think is appropriate. Uh, when it's my round, when it's my turn every three weeks to host one of these uh, formerly members only segments, I do a lightning round where instead of diving deep on one subject, I grab a bunch of headlines selected semi at random and then I inflict them upon Bill and Scott in alternating order. And this week we're going to start off with uh, Bill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Except you guys are in the wrong screen for you. Were yeah, I don't know which side that. I'm on, actually. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, Bill, first headlines for you. Elizabeth Warren blasts Michael Bloomberg, says he's trying to buy a nomination. But isn't that what Liz Warren is trying to do just with other people's <laughs> money? <laughs> See, this is the beauty, uh, and and we talked in uh, in your regular segment this week about Democratic candidates, and and this is the beauty of 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 um, of progressive politics. It it doesn't work in real life, and because it doesn't work in real life, eventually they run out of room for it to work rhetorically. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there yeah. there are so many there are so many bits of, of like mental gymnastics they have to do. It's like Bernie Sanders has to figure out a way to explain he's all for socialism and he owns three houses, <laughs> and that's because socialism is insane. Um, and 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 not only is it insane, human nature is what conservatism is based on. And and if you would you would think on paper that if there was one guy ever who was dedicated to the socialist principle in American politics and would continue to live in a modest house and give the money for the other two houses away, it would be Bernie Sanders. But turns out, nope, greed is part of the human condition, and that's why the founders got together and made their little book of rules. Um, yeah. So, you know, yes, well, first of all, she's right. He is trying to buy the nomination. And your point is, is, is beautiful. She's, she's trying to buy it too, just with other people's money. But now we get into the, oh, you're a billionaire. Um, so you're bad. And, um, you know, how does she do it? How? <laughs> I see what you did there, Bill. Scott, I saw you taking no. notes. Did you have something to say before I uh, got to your headline? No, I was just actually writing a note to my wife. Uh, no. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Do that on your own time, No, Mr. what I was thinking is Michael Bloomberg, if if, if he were uh, if he were a Republican and Elizabeth Warren said you're just trying to- <laughs> If he were alive today. <laughs> yes. If, if Michael Bloomberg were alive today. Um, you would, uh, if somebody said to me, you know, you're just trying to buy the election, I'd say that's outrageous and how much? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, Michael Bloomberg was a Republican, if you'll recall. And I don't think Democratic primary voters will forgive him for that. I mean, they'll forgive you for killing a guy in Arkansas or whatever. But being a Republican, ugh, can't have that. Uh, so, oh, uh, Scott, I need to give you a headline. Yes. I love this one. This one just it, oh, it, no. it, it warms my, my black little heart. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gets entire solar company workforce fired after telling them to unionize. Well, ah, so she, my previous point. So they followed, they they listened to the uh, to the rookie uh, representative from New York, and yep. decided they would add her inspiration that they would form a union. That's that's what you're saying happened. Yep, yep. They <laughs> they tried to organize and they all got let go. What what does it well, take to be a friend of the working man these days, Scott? I guess that's the question, isn't it? You know, um, I, I think that uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez should try to unionize Congress. I think that all of the <laughs> interns and all of the staffers that work for Congress should all form a union and fight for their rights to not have to work at slave wages late into the night and on weekends and, and you know, do undignified things uh, for these people who are allegedly the representatives of the people. Yeah, it's just another one of those examples where, you know, if they were living that way, it would be be something different, but they're not. Um, and instead, uh, they're they're you know encouraging people to go out and do things which are not only counterintuitive and counterproductive, but actually just uh, hello, Alexandria. The world doesn't work that way. 
You know, companies, not every company in America is making so much stinking money that they don't know where to put it. In fact, most of them are just trying to eke out a couple of pennies profit on a dollar. And if they can do that, they're considered a success. If they can somehow conduct their business in a way that the cash flow outruns the debt, uh, then they're doing extraordinarily well. Unfortunately, you see things like you say, well, we got some wealthy CEOs out there, so they must be uh, cheating somebody. Um, when as a matter of fact, those companies could not find somebody who could take the helm of their companies if they didn't compensate them that richly. That's why these guys get paid this much because there are jobs that Americans just don't want to do unless they can make millions of dollars and get lots of stock options doing them. So I don't know. It's, it's sad. I would just say, if you're going to listen to what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, tells you um, about your employment relationship, I suggest that you have her make that phone call and then <laughs> get a recording of it because I just want to hear her talking to my boss about, <laughs> about our working conditions. I will say, I will say in AOC's defense, though, at least now the, the people who were fired from this a solar energy plant, at least they don't have to spend their days hunched over pushing out those railway cars full of uh, sunshine. You know, it's it's almost <laughs> unbearable, the conditions that those guys have to work under out there in the solar farms of the billionaires that basically are raping the photons. Who, who are, will slaughter are, the desert creatures now that that solar farm is out of business? <laughs> The raping struggle is the real photons, man. folks. That that's your membership dollar right there. That that <laughs> phrase. You, you're gonna take. You're gonna tell your kids the day you heard that. I was there when he said he they raped the photons. Uh oh, Bill, it's your turn. I I saw this one and I thought of you instantly. I think you're gonna have fun with this. Bill Crystal, you remember him? Bill Crystal says Trump is a bigger threat to free markets than Elizabeth Warren. I say other than. Uh, taxing millionaires and entrepreneurs and innovators out of existence. How do you enjoy your capitalism, Mrs. Warren? You know, I, I really do think that a, a serious, a serious answer when you deal with this kind of thing, you know, when you're, you're, if you're playing football, especially you're out there on the field and you're, and you're whipping another team and you're just humiliating them. And then they start, you know, they start talking trash at you. And, and really, there's only one response that really wins that argument. That's just point to the scoreboard, right? I mean, scoreboard. And uh, Donald Trump can point to the scoreboard. You know, we went from less than 1% economic growth to three and a half or four uh, record unemployment uh, lows. Uh, we have, um, I remember this statistic, I'm, I'm off by maybe 10 or $20. But during eight years of Barack Obama, the average American family uh, increased their standard of living by $1,200, eight years. Yeah. And in the three years of Donald Trump, it's $5,600. So, um, so if, if that's the biggest threat to, um, to world capitalism and the future of America's economy, then the country is in very, very good shape. And, uh, and I, you know, I don't know. You, you can say, I, I, I see, this is the thing, Steve. I can see, I can see a case I don't agree with it, but I can see a case where Bill Crystal could make a case about all of the things that he doesn't like about Donald Trump, that he feels are hurting the presidency and so on and so sure. on and so on. But the economy is beyond doubt, a, a beyond doubt, a, a, a result of a conservative president cutting taxes and watching the economy expand after eight years of high taxation and never knowing if you're going to get hit with another $1,200 per employee for some new, you know, really? program that yes. somebody else decided to put through. Yeah. And that's the worst part of hiring is when you never know down the pike how much that employee is actually going to cost because you have no idea what new regulation mandate, whatever is, is, is about to get slapped on you. And that it, it just, it, it makes hiring almost impossible for a business that is able to plan more than six months in the future. And if you can't plan more than six months in the future, you don't have a business for very long. All right. Look uh, how deep we had to scrape the bottom of the barrel, for example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Steve, you want to yeah, form a union? Yeah. No. <laughs> there. How about that? Uh, you can fire Scott after the show. Scott, uh, <laughs> last headlines for you. You got, you got to get one more segment out of him, though. Uh, uh, disaster looms for Democrats <sighs> as Trump goes bigly, Trump's favorite word, 
with Blacks. He's made a, making a huge uh, radio advertising buy in uh, in black markets in various cities across the nation. And I think he's he no, I don't think he's really making a play for black voters. And we were just talking about this in my previous segment. It, if he scores 10, 12 percent, is it all over. over? And But my question isn't that. Uh, really, my question is, how long has it been since you've wanted to see a Republican make a play like this? Um, I, I may have mentioned this before on this show, but uh, I had a private meeting with a guy who was the incumbent governor of Pennsylvania and a very small group, maybe half a dozen or fewer people who were um, talking to him about how he can kind of get his campaign uh, on track and have a chance. Now, ultimately, he lost that re-election bid after having one of the most incredible election uh, victories in a long time. So he, he went from, you know, absolute triumph to utter despair. And what I said to him in that meeting was, you need to start going to the places where people don't already support you and showing yeah. that they matter to you. You need to go to the inner cities, you know, in Pennsylvania, especially Philadelphia and Pittsburgh are the concentration, the concentrated population centers of that state. And so this guy was very popular in what they call the T in the middle of the state, but it's mostly rural. You need to go in there. And I said, you need to go stand on the steps of a failing public school and put your arm around a black man on one side of you and a Latino woman on the other side of you and say that you're sick and tired of these people having to endure these government-run, taxpayer-funded failure factories, and you're going to do something about it when you're governor. I would love to see that. Hey, one thing, Steve, since it's yeah. lightning round and rules don't apply or anything. No. Um, <laughs> uh, the, um, you know... I saw this during the many years I was an editor on Sunday Morning Shootout, which was a talk show on AMC with Peter Barton, Peter Goober. And I watched how the hosts and guests behaved when there was a black guest on. And that, that kind of super liberal kind of kid glove kind of a, you know, uh. kind of a thing. And, and, and this is immediately transparent to anybody. Nobody it's likes insulting. being spoken to that way. And, and when, and when Hillary Clinton puts on her Southern accent and, and says, oh, I got about, I got a little thing of hot sauce in my purse. And Elizabeth Warren says, I'm going to go get me a beer. And all, you know, they, People understand that this is just pandering. Donald Trump seems to speak plainly to everybody. And and whether you like what he says or how he says it, there is an authenticity to the guy that uh, that the Democrats just simply don't have. And, and if he's making a play for the black vote, I think he's going to get it. And that is the end of that. Well, and I think that this this gubernatorial candidate was all for charter schools. He just didn't take that message to anywhere where it could have made a difference for him. Uh, that's just that, 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 that is short sighted, uh, self-defeating politicking. I hate to see it. And it is very much more common on the Republican side than it is on the Democrat side, because uh, the Democratic Party exists to to serve their various interest groups and Republicans, not so much. Uh, wow, I thought I knew what I wanted to talk about, but uh, instead maybe I'll talk about this. Uh, Scott Brink, it's just a, a, a great point. I want to talk about the, the, the five different types of, of voters that you – that exist in any election. Each side has uh, the, your hardcore Republicans and your hardcore Democrats. Those are the first two groups. Those are the people who are going to show up to vote every time, and they're going to vote a straight party line ticket, more or less, and you can just depend on these people unless something's seriously gone wrong. Then you've got your, uh, your, your leaners on both sides. That's your second two groups. And those are the people who will generally vote for the Republican or the Democratic candidate, but might need a little convincing. They might need a little uh, uh, push, a prod, uh, something to get them to the polls. And that's really what the, the get out the vote effort is about, is, is getting those people who are, who are leaning your way, but maybe not convinced that you're worth the effort of leaving the House on Election Day. And then you have the actual swing voters who are, what, 10, maybe 15% in a, in a presidential election. And those are the people you fight over. And if the economy is really good or really bad, uh, their vote is probably predetermined. Otherwise, in a year like 2016, you really don't know what they're going to do. And it turned out that enough of them went with Trump to, to put him in the White House because of a uh, because of uh, basically, I think Hillary's weakness. But the real key, the real key, and this is what Scott was talking about, is you've got your you've got your voters on your side you can count on. You've got your leaners who you pull in. You've got your your swing voters that you try and get, and those are voters that you add 
to your column one at a time. But if you can go after the other guy's base, if yeah. you can pluck one of their voters away, you've just gained two votes because you haven't just gotten one for you. You've taken one away from the other guy. And that's what Trump did in uh, in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and uh, and Michigan in 2016 was he took enough Obama voters away to deny those states to Hillary Clinton. And that's what that's what put him in the White House. And if he's going after black voters in a big way, this could be a far less close election than I've been sort of on pins and needles about for, uh, well, for about three years already. So we'll see how this plays out. But I really like the moves that I'm seeing on Trump's side. And I just if anyone's going to be this bold, it's going to be Trump. Let's see how it plays out. That's your right angle on that. Brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. If you have been a freeloader all this time, click on over. Become a member. We'd love to have you on board. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. 